first generation. Back then, computers didn't look like this. Instead, they look so big that they can fill an entire room with rows of cabinets, fans, and wires. Also, the computer's processor is not a CPU like we have today. They still ran on vacuum tubes, which are glass tubes that processed electrical signals to perform calculations. And you actually needed thousands of these vacuum tubes just for one computer. So not only were they massive in size, but they also used tons of electricity and generated a lot of heat. And the maintenance was bothersome as well, because if just one tube stopped working, you'd have to find it among thousands of others. And there was no hard drive either. The data storage was a magnetic drum, which worked like a hard drive, but with a tiny capacity and a size as big as a bucket. Also, there were no screens, operating systems, images, or videos whatsoever. So users had to rely on punch cards to operate the computer, which is basically stiff paper cards with holes in them. Each hole represented a bit of information or a command, and the computer would read them line by line. And since everything was so basic, computers back then were mainly used only for calculations, scientific research, or government documents, with the results either printed directly onto paper or punched back into cards for storage and later processing. Second Generation in the second generation, vacuum tubes were replaced by transistors, which have the same function as vacuum tubes. But transistors were better because they were smaller than vacuum tubes, which made computers smaller and cheaper as well. Also, transistors were faster than vacuum tubes. So if you need one hour for calculation and stuff with the first generation computers, you only need minutes with the second generation computers. And it could operate longer since it doesn't generate as much heat as the vacuum tubes, so it's less prone to overheat. However, despite the upgrade, the way it was operated was still handled with punch cards like in the first generation. But at least this time, the storage was upgraded from magnetic drum to magnetic tape. The size was big as well, but it could hold more data compared to a magnetic drum. Third generation. This time, computers finally started to look like computers of our era. That's because instead of wiring thousands of separate transistors like in the second generation computers, this time they used ICs or integrated circuits instead. So these integrated circuits contain a chip, and these chips actually contain many transistors in a microscopic size or even just nanometer size. This was created directly on them using a process called photolithography, which is like drawing patterns with light to form the circuit. But the most important thing is that computers began supporting keyboards with monitors, so people don't need to use punch cards anymore to operate them. Also, operating systems like Unix and IBM 360 started to show up as well. However, the interface at that time was still text-based instead of graphical like what we have today. And lastly, floppy disks started to show up, so they became the preferable storage for computers because they're more portable and convenient compared to magnetic tapes. Fourth generation. The fourth generation introduced the microprocessor, a tiny chip that could do a better job and work faster than those old machines from previous generations. And since all the parts like the CPU, motherboard, and power supply were now small enough to fit into one unit and sit on top of a desk, they became known as desktop computers. But the best thing is that computers at that time already used the graphical user interface instead of the text-based interface, so users could simply click icons or drag and drop files using a mouse to operate it. And the programs you can operate are various too. You could play simple games, draw images, or browse the internet. And even though floppy disks still existed, CDs and hard drives started to take over. So people use CDs to install programs or operating systems, play music, or watch movies. And for saving personal files like photos and documents, people would put them on hard drives. Fifth generation. The fifth generation of computers doesn't refer to a specific machine or processor. It's more about a shift in purpose. Instead of just making computers faster or smaller, this generation focuses on making them smarter. That's why now many things are integrated with artificial intelligence. AI is now used in graphics cards to enhance visual quality with features like ray tracing, allowing games to look better. AI also powers self-driving cars like Tesla, helping them navigate roads and make split-second decisions. And AI is also behind voice assistants like Alexa and Google Assistant, which are now often integrated with smart home devices. And these days, even AI can generate entirely new video with realistic speech, like making someone say things they never actually said. By the way, I made some cool videos about every type of data storage and types of file, so don't forget to watch them later, okay?